two years since we last sat down. Yeah. And a little has happened in your life, okay? Just, just a teeny tiny bit. New marriage, mm. new baby, mm -hmm. world tour, new CD. Keep what are, what are, yeah, tell me, what am I leaving out? New movie. New movie? Mm hmm What else? Uh, two new houses. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a busy little girl. New circles under my eyes. <laughs> are you tired? Has it been that busy a year? I am exhausted, and I have not stopped since. Let's see. We got married last year, and actually Sunday will be... Yeah, by the way, happy anniversary. Thank you. Sunday will be a year. <clears throat> marriage. Peaches and cream, walk in the park, hard work. Is that my only choice? <laughs> you can add anything you want. <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> um, it's an incredible experience. It has been an incredible experience. And I think my husband and I are very well suited for each other. He's incredibly strong-willed and opinionated and full of life and adventurous and intelligent. But with all of that, you also get um, opinionated and strong-willed. And <laughs> the good news is, the bad news is. <laughs> exactly. But you're the same way. I know, I so know. So is there a lot but of I headbutting? I could never be with anyone else, that, that, you know, anyone who wasn't like that. Otherwise, you know, a strong people need to be with strong people. Yeah, but how do, when you get to the strong-willed, opinionated, and you butt heads on those things, who walks away first? Because someone has to. We usually come to a point where we both know that both of us are acting like babies. Right. And, and it's sort of like we take turns, like I'll, I'll take turns and sometimes it will be my turn to continue acting like a baby and then he'll say he's sorry. And then if I've done that for a few times and he'll know it's his turn to do it, so. Do you say you're sorry when you're not sorry? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. <laughs> but it works. Do you want your marriage to last? <laughs> exactly. You learn to say you're sorry. <laughs> or I screwed up. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. All of those things. It was my mistake. You're absolutely right. Is it true that, that you and Mr. Ritchie had your very first date in this very room? Um, more or less, yes. We, he came um, and called on me for tea. But actually, he showed up a day early. He showed up on the wrong day, which I thought was really sweet. A little anxious. Isn't that sweet? That no, he nice. has a very bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> anxious had nothing to do with it. But it was the start of something good. Lourdes is, what, four or five now? Five. Five. Yeah. She had it pretty good there for a while. It was you and her. Yeah. And now these two guys moved into the mm -hmm. house. How's she handling that? Um, I think she was quite jealous at first. Quite uh, competitive. Of Guy, of Rocco? Uh, uh, more with Guy, because she did have me all to herself, and he was like, who's this stranger walking into my life? But we did it very, very slowly, and we had a very long courtship, and um, so that was an adjustment at first. She sort of refused to speak to him for a while. And, um, but Guy played it right, and he, he, he's really, really good with her. And, um, um, and then, then I had Rocco, and there was just a tiny little hiccup kind of moment where um, it no seemed like involved. she was heading to the bed for a strangulation type of thing, but she's great with him now. Yeah. You, you mentioned shooting a movie with Guy. Mm. Um, I think I read somewhere that it was either going to make or break your relationship. Yeah, I'm sure I said I'm sure I said something like that, and and it, it was a challenge. Well, I wasn't very happy. What kind of a gym could you possibly carry? Then what? Well, then I I showed her the gym. He showed me the gym. And 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 your gym, madam. She just had to scream. I was pretty understanding, actually. Anthony! How big a test was it? Huge, huge. But and I t so think I deserve a medal for getting through it. More so than he? Um, well, I think, yeah, to a certain extent, because, you know, he's the director and he was in charge, you know what I mean? And I had to really take off my, my wife hat when I came to work every day. And, you know, since there would be lots of times when he would be directing and I'd think, oh, you know, oh, he's not being very nice to me right now, or, or he's being dismissive with me or whatever. And then I think, oh, no, that's not me. That's not the actress thinking that. That's the wife thinking that. And I would get really confused. Do you know what I mean? If you go home at night and you wait. sit and have dinner and you have a fight and you cross words and you come to work the next day and now you're the actress. Mm, a lot of times I uh, chose to not have a fight with him and not bring up things that bothered me because I didn't want to bring it to work the next day. Um, I had to seriously pick and choose my battles. And, and it, was, it was good for me, because I'm the kind of person that, you know, if the littlest thing bothers me, I want to be confrontational, I want to get it over with, I want to solve the problem. 
And it's not always a good idea to go that route. Sometimes you need to sit back and think about things. And I had to do a lot of that. Um, so a Did great lesson in humility. Several books have come out about you. Mm. She crosses her arms more tightly. Oh, shut um, up. No, no, no. Don't analyze me. Not one was authorized. Well, okay? All right. What did you think about these? But give me some words to describe them. Bkers. Everybody who wrote them. It's a British word. <laughs> what? That, that you give understand me some, Yeah, I, unfortunately I do. <laughs> so give me some more definitions. What, or some more adjectives. I can't say on TV. Well, Every time I say, can say a bad word, I don't Um... Stupidity. I mean, they're just, they're just a waste of time. They're a waste of everybody's time. I mean, the whole idea that you're writing a biography, you're writing a book about somebody that you've never met, uh, that, and, you, uh, and presumably you've interviewed absolutely no one that truly knows the person, what is the point? I, I mean, it's, it's, it's purely... Well, you know the point. It's, it's it, you know, it's based on money. And, right. and Do you object to their right to do it? No, I mean, I believe in freedom of the press, so, you know, but I, I don't have to like it. I have a question that I'm trying to ask you, and I've thought about it, and I don't know how to ask you. I keep you. interrupting No, you. seriously, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to ask you this. Right, so before you me. ask me. No, it's not a bad question, <laughs> but in some ways, over the course of your career, you have done so much to change, reinvent yourself, stay in the public eye, different personas, different... Wait a minute, wait a minute. But I haven't asked the question yet. No, but I have to correct what you're saying. I haven't done so much to stay in the public eye. I have done so much. Oh, yeah. I have been productive. I have been With creative. With what purpose? To get people to buy your music. No, that's too simplified. Absolutely to not. To express yourself. Yes, because I am an artist, and I have to create, and I have to write music, and I want to act. Those things make me feel good. said one time, you said some of your early music... Makes me barf. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that... I think you just said make, makes me sick, but we always like a good vomit story here. Yeah. <laughs> For example, what? Well, I, I just... Uh, I, I don't want to... I don't know. Come on. I'm not I mean, asking you to... Just, years ago. But I mean, what song material is Material Girl? Makes you barf. Hello. It's funny. It has kitsch value. You know what I mean? What, uh, I mean? what other songs would fall into that category? Like a virgin. Like a virgin. Touched for the very first time. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're great songs. And they're, they're of an era and, 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 and all that. And, but I mean, do I want to sit and listen to it? Do I want to perform it? No. My songs are like a map of my life. And uh, they all mean something to me. They're like tattoos. They all happen at a certain time in my life, and if I listen to them, I can go exactly back to that time in my life, what I was doing, how I was feeling. When you sit down to do this very creatively titled GHV2, mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to go back. I mean, was it, were there other working titles? or? Oh, listen, I, was, I just finished the tour, and I was going up to make a movie. I couldn't think straight. I mean, yeah, I mean, we tried lots of things. So, so you called it GHV2. Yeah. How'd you choose what to put on it? Because you got a lot to, to choose from. I had four records to choose from, and I basically chose my favorite songs that I really like to listen to. What's the test? I don't want to sit and listen to it once, or if I sat and someone put it on a loop and I had to listen to it five times in a row, and I got upset with it, then I can't listen to it. Then, I, then it's not a good song. This is sort of like the second half of my music career. So they had to pass the can I listen to it five times in a row test. If someone doesn't know Madonna mm -hmm. and they listen to this album, uh -huh. it's really not representative of your music in general because so many of the other songs on these albums that aren't singles uh -huh. are pretty good songs. No, then it can't be called the greatest hits package, is it? Because it wasn't a great hit. Could have been called, you can't, otherwise it's my favorites. Oh, why don't I just call it Lazy? <laughs> <laughs> Which is almost as good a title, by the way. <laughs> if you want to get picky here. Whatever, you can remember it. Let me talk about the world tour. 
I don't know what your expectations were going in, mm. but the, it sold out. Mm. It got an enormous amount of attention. Did you expect that? I, I have to say I didn't have any expectations when I went in. I just, I, when I started doing it, I just thought I want to, I want to make a show that is entertaining. <laughs> all around from, from a visual aspect, from, uh, from an audio aspect, and I want to take people on a journey. I have the rebellious teenager in me, and that I, I'll, I'll, I'll always have that. Um, and I didn't try to be edgy. I just, I know that my sensibilities are always left of conventional and, and mainstream, and so I just stayed true to myself. And um, I like being provocative, as you know, you presented an award recently here mm -hmm. in, in London at the Tate Museum. Yeah. Very prestigious award. Very, no? Yeah, very. Very prestigious <laughs> building. Uh-huh. And you got up and you talked about freedom of speech and freedom of expression. It was a lovely speech. And at the end, on live television... No, no, no. I didn't talk about freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Well, I talked you. about how silly award shows are. Okay, and then you said... Um, I want to support any artist who not only has something to say, but the to say it. Mm -hmm. In a time when political correctness is valued over honesty, mm -hmm. I would like to say... Go ahead. <laughs> right on, mother... <gasps> Everyone is a winner. Yeah. And the winner is... I did say that. Gosh, that's one of the few times I've been quoted correctly. Created a, a bit of a stir here, didn't it? Yeah. Whatever. I mean, as if no one says that word on live television. But it's a cutting-edge contemporary award. So, Would anyway. you take it back? Absolutely not. People expect that sort of behavior from me. <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> it's true. I mean, the thing is, and I'll tell you the real reason, and this is my perverse sense of humor, is that they want to read my speech. They wanted me to give them a copy of my speech, my speech before I went on. And I said, no, I'm not going to. And so they kept trying to get the information out of me in really unclever ways. And I just like. got pissed off at them, you know, like, how many words is it? How many minutes is it? So then I just got insulted. And then they said, oh, and, you know, when you, when you, <clears throat> and then, oh, they said, how would you like to be introduced? And I said, Mrs. Ritchie. And they said, oh, no, we can't do that because everyone knows you as Madonna. Come on. Can we have, can we play a little bit? I mean, oh, it was ridiculous. And then they said at the end, oh, please don't, we don't, um, we, uh, we hope and pray that there is no profanity in your speech. And it's I was like, like an invitation to don't you. Don't tell me not to swear. Please don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea who you're tempting here? Exactly. So then, of course, I, I did take that as an invitation, and, and I said it, and I felt much better afterwards. <clears throat> if, if we speak every two years, what do you want to do between now and the next time we sit down to do an interview? Um, gosh. Well, I'd like to record another album. And I'd like to travel more and write. I keep starting, I've been writing a screenplay for a hundred years. I keep starting it and then I keep getting distracted by a project and putting it away. It's very funny and that's my goal to finish it. Um, so I want to do that and maybe direct it, I don't know. Um, Continue to act? Yes. Um, I want to learn to ride a horse. And I wanted to learn to drive on the wrong side of the road. You still haven't driven here? I, I have, but it's always with my husband screaming at me, and I'm going to take regular lessons now because I can't deal with it. You're going to get in one of those cars with the little student driver things on top? <laughs> no. No, it's going to be a slightly more uh, low-key scenario. Um, I would love to see the guy pull up next to you at the stop sign. <laughs> it's Madonna. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a good start. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. It's always good to see you. Okay.